Hello, my name is Zisel Slepovich and I'm going to talk about the Slavic elements in the Ashkenazic Jewish folk song. Since the Jewish communities moved towards the center and east of Europe, fleeing from violent persecutions at the time of the Great Plague of 1347-1351, they have settled mainly among the Baltic, Slavic, Hungarian and Romanian speaking nations. Over more than six centuries, Yiddish language got its peculiar super dialect, Eastern Yiddish, that split into three major dialects and a plethora of transitional dialects and sub-dialects of the language. They all employ a significant number of localisms and loan words from high contact cultures that along with many other factors shape plethora unique patois. Similar processes happen to Jewish music in general and song in all its variety in particular. The key to understanding the process of active Slavization of the Ashkenazic Jewish song is contained in the concept of ethnic hearing, which is a primary level cultural setting, similar to that of the mother tongue, spread among the individuals of one ethnic or societal group. It is extremely fluid in constantly changing, as it is interacting with the environmental soundscapes that are also dynamically changing. The melodic commonality of the Slavic and much of the Eastern Ashkenazic Jewish music can be explained not only by a number of coincidences, which they might be of course, but also by tuning each culture's hearing to the other. The adaptiveness of each culture is realized by active participating in the common soundscape, the mellow sphere, that determines its musical idioms and ultimately shapes it. At the same time, ethnic hearing bears a solid core. In Jewish tradition, that core historically was contained in the synagogue chant. The tropes or stable motifs each assigned for reading a particular part of Torah, prophets, prayers and other sacred texts. Melodically, it is based on the modal system going back to the Mediterranean region. In Slavic tradition, melodic patterns were rather assigned to the calendar cycle, such as summer solstice, St. John's, Ivan Kupala, spring calling, harvest, and a mix of pagan and Christian holidays. <laughs> It is clear that functionally, that is on the religious, societal and philosophical levels, these two systems are quite incompatible. Even the Germanic base of Yiddish, which is not originally attached to the core body of the Jewish religious texts, appeared as an additional foreign element when large Jewish population migrated away from the German-speaking neighbors to those speaking Slavic and Baltic languages, as well as the Romance one, Romanian. This contrast grew into a slander against Jews during World War I, when they were en masse accused of being German spies. With all these starkly contrasting elements, the gradual acculturation of the Jewish music, as well as other cultural expressions, into the Eastern European civilizational continuum seems all but natural. What we're looking at is convergent evolution of the ethnic hearing. Several genetically different cultures, while keeping their differences, start looking, sounding, tasting and feeling a lot like two brothers from different mothers. Actually more than two. Account for other minorities in the present day Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Belarus, Ukraine, Poland, Russia and so on. The Tatars, the Karaites and the Russian Orthodox old believers, Staroviri and others who all follow the same path in adapting to the local ecological and cultural conditions. The Reform Synagogue in the early 19th century, Germany, Austria and several other Western and Central European countries mostly switched to the Western harmonic and melodical style, as reflected most vividly in the work of its pioneer cantor Salomon Zulzer of Vienna. Eastern European synagogue and Hasidic courts kept their affinity to the old Mediterranean prayer tropes married in the cantorial art Chazonis to the Italian bel canto, never losing their inimitable ecstatic expression. 
While firmly holding to its core musical layer, the synagogue chant, Eastern European Ashkenazic Jews felt extremely free to incorporate elements of both Chazonis and any surrounding music elements that were available to them into all other genres and forms of music making. Folk song, instrumental or klezmer music, the art of batchens, wedding gestures, paraliturgical genres such as zmiris, piyutim, all that was freely interweaving genetically diverse musical material. On the larger scale, this seeming eclecticism points at an extremely important characteristic of the Jewish music and culture in general. It keeps renewing, if not reinventing itself, at any given historical period. This mechanism enables the very vitality of the Jewish culture, if only at the cost of it looking as many different cultures. In this widespread acculturation, there were several processes going on and different processes taking place simultaneously, while appearing possibly similar on the outside. Let us look at each of them and try to understand how Ashkenazic Jewish song acquired inherently foreign features of the Slavic musical lore. First and foremost, there are pan-regional melodic patterns and even songs that became widespread and claimed by various ethnic groups. They are not necessarily Slavic or Jewish, they traveled all across the European continent and were widely adapted by everyone from children to folk singers to professional composers. In his article, I found a little nut tree lurking in the bag, written for the British Bagpipe Society in 2011, James Merriweather compares 18 songs, tunes and classical works, including Hatikva, created all over Europe, that display the obvious similarity in the melodic pattern. The, easiest and earl the earliest two examples in minor tonality come both from the 16th century. One is the Spanish composer Antonio de Cabezón's Diferencia sobre el canto llamo del caballero, variations on the plain song of the night, which we will hear as performed by the Danish organist Finn Widerer. <laughs> Another is Italian folk song Fuji Fuji, also known as Ballo Mantovano, arranged at that time by Gaetano Greco and Giovanni Battista Farini, here performed by Ensemble Lucidarium. Fuji 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 da questo cielo aspro e duro spietato to gelo. Fuji 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 da questo cielo aspro e duro spietato to gelo. Tu che tutto in prigione neghi, ne per pianto ti frangi o pieghi, che ti danno gel dell'anno. Fuji 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 da dove eterno, su le prime a seggio eterno. Several centuries later, Czech composer Bedrzej Smetana used the same melodic pattern in the main theme of Moldau, or Voltava, from the orchestral suite Mavlast, My Country. There are also several vivid traditional music examples. One is the Polish song Tam pod Krakowem na Błoniu, near Krakow on the Meadow, from Zygmunt Glogger's collection, recorded between 1861 and 1891 and published in Krakow in 1892 with musical arrangements by Zygmunt Noskowski. Tam pod Krakowem na Błoniu, wywiał Jasiu na koniu, a ha ha but probably, most notably, the melodic pattern of Hatikva can be found in the Romanian folk song Karul Kuboi, the ox cart. Prince 
erau încă aflate, mergeau toate fără zor. Când bătrânii erau moi și-și mânau carul cu boi, Hăișea, hăișea, hăișea. When identifying Slavic elements in the Ashkenazic Jewish song, we are often looking at a translation of a Slavic folk song or even a Slavic style composed song that got popularized and folklorized. One of such examples is the Ukrainian popular folk song Hop Moi Hrechaniki, Hey My Bokwit Patis, widely performed and recorded throughout the 20th century, and its Yiddish translation by M. Pirozhnikov that is sung as a Purim song. We will hear the Ukrainian song performed by Ivan Patorzhinsky, who recorded it commercially in the 1930s. The Yiddish version was recorded in 2015 by the Yiddish Book Center's Wexler Oral History Project from Sue Ehrlich, a New York native, a Yiddish activist and artist. <laughs> Речами гиочиняти своїх діток готувати. Hommentaschen backen, hopp meine Hommentaschen, hopp meine Weiße, hopp mit meiner Hommentaschen, hot passiert am Meiße. Examples like this are abundant. The reason these translations emerged was that once a song made it to the urban milieu and got popularized via contemporary media, everybody knew it. Adapting new lyrics to a popular song paved the way to easy memorizing and spread of such translations. Many Yiddish songs were composed in the pan-regional style, both urban and rural. They are not necessarily Jewish versions of existing Ukrainian, Russian or Belarusian songs. The lyrical peasant song is characterized by the intrasyllabic vocalizations, fluid voice leading, the ambitus or the range of the song that is based on the so-called Slavic sixth, which we earlier heard in the song Hope meine Homentaschen. Most of such songs are performed by or on behalf of women. Some are lyrical songs, some are ballads. The following song, Treib die Qualis Tiefer Teich, Carry the Waves, Deep River, was remembered from the pre-World War II era and performed for the Fortunoff Video Archive for Holocaust Testimonies at Yale University by Jack M., a Holocaust survivor from Szydłowiec, Poland. She is, she is singing like f she was standing by the ocean to the waves to, instead of a letter. She, said, she gave the song like that. Treib die Falles, die Verteich, treib sei über Bergen tu, mein Geliebten von der Weiten. In the late 19th, early 20th century style, it's also the juxtaposition of the minor tonality in the beginning of the verse and relative major in the second part of it, or vice versa. This is characteristic of many Ukrainian, Polish, Slovak and other Slavic songs from that period. One such example is a macaronic song in Yiddish and Russian, Solnichka na balkonia stajala, Solnichka was standing on the balcony. It was recorded by Ruth Rubin from the Belarusian Jewish immigrant in New York, a folk singer, Fagel Yudin, born in Grodna Gubernia. We will listen to a fragment presented by Sasha Luria. Sonichka na balkonie stajala, stajala, 
До склейна штибул шмир, до склейна штибул шмир. Вдруг приходит миленько и зовет меня шпацир. Вдруг приходит миленько и зовет меня шпацир. Another such example is a bilingual song Affenberg Unternberg or Iberberg und Ibertollen On the Mountain, Under the Mountain where every two lines in Yiddish get translated into Belarusian or Russian. In melodic aspect, this song interestingly combines the so-called Jewish fourth interval, a hallmark of many synagogue prayer chants and by extension folk songs and instrumental tunes and the harmonic juxtaposition of minor and its relative major. Let us listen to two variants of the first verse, one performed by a wonderful folk singer Odom Orlinsky, born in Baranovici, now Belarus, and the New York-based klezmer band Litvakus that I am privileged to lead. <laughs> За горами, за долами голуби летели, голуби летели, еще радость не пришла, годы улетели, еще радость не пришла, годы улетели. Not infrequently, instrumental dance tunes become the music base for folk songs, and a lot of those tunes come from the Slavic folklore. The song Klip Klap Tirale, Knock Knock Little Door, which was recorded in its many variants, is based on Polish dances, Chodzony, Walking Dance, and the Polonaise. We recorded this variant with Professor Nina Stepanskaya in Vitebsk, Belarus, from sisters Hoda Zavileva and Bela Yudovina, both natives of the nearby town of Beshankovice. Клип клап тирле, ти до шлов, ти до лик, шлов он шлов он шлов их ни, у не фенен вели дрова дени, шлов он шлов он шлов их ни, у не фенен вели дрова дени. Хасидик негудим were among the most eclectic genres in Eastern Europe. Following the principle of sanctification of a tune, Kiddush Sanigan, many were either adapted versions of non-Jewish tunes from the local songs and dances to Napoleon's army march, which became a staple for Yom Kippur. Some acquired Jewish modal system but retained the rhythmic structure of the Slavic dance. One such example is Nezhurite Chlopci, with lyrics in Russian. One of the most popular nigunim that is sung across many Hasidic communities here is a recording of Lubavitcher Rebbe singing the nigan at his Farbrengen. Let me finish this short insight into a really endless and endlessly fascinating theme of mutual influences of the neighboring cultures by another case, the parody. The style and genre of the Polish dance Krakowiak was utilized in the song criticizing the Jewish women who were eager to abandon their mother tongue and Yiddish literature for the Polish language and books. The wonderful theatrical use of voice modality and intonation by Masha Roskis, the native of Vilna and the mother of the eminent Jewish scholar David Roskis, don't leave a spot for misunderstanding this lovely piece of satire. By the Zidówkis, 
Издр крис акшонес, Меретох пойлеш он рахмонес, Мензол за ниж даркенен, Дижедувке с возой зенен, Пейлеш из базей аж прах, Идеш и за месесах, А капоре аж он перец, Фарб шебушевский год менгой издр херес, Мензол за ниж даркенен, и жидувки с возой зенен, Пойлеш из базей аж прах, идеш и за месесах. Обер воже, воже, тут мен воз, Воже, тут мен идем жидовский нос, До кемен зей даркенен, и жидувки с возой зенен, Идеш и за шейне шпрах, Пойлеш и за месяц,